Online. Today we are discussing NTA UGC NET 2023 paper to economics. In this class we discuss about market structures and this topic from microeconomics we deal with MCQs. And let's start with the first question. First question related with the long run equilibrium of a perfectly competitive firm. What is perfectly competitive firm? A firm with large number of buyers and sellers and with identical products is a market of perfectly competitive. And here the price is equal to MC, AC and AR. And here also the profit is normal. And the answer for this question, price equals MC equals AC. So, it is the long run equilibrium of a perfectly competitive firm. Here, the marginal cost and average cost that equal to the price. So, the firm enjoys a normal profit and does not yield a super normal profit. Okay, the next question. And before that, we can see the MCAC. Here, the AC and MC equals the point is the output of equilibrium. Q is the equilibrium point of a firm. And here also the price equals AR and MR. So the average revenue and the marginal revenue that equal to the price and also the, the AC MC equality that for the price. So, the firm is in an equilibrium state. So, the long run equilibrium of the firm equals P equal to AC equal to MC. And the next question. Price taker firm that faces a demand curve that perfectly inelastic or unitary elastic or perfectly elastic or elasticity of zero. Here the price taker firm means the firm is not at all able to price maker or the monopoly firm. So here the firm make the price taker. So the what the price that prevailing in the market, the firm will enjoy that price also. He cannot increase or decrease the price that in the market. So at that point of time, the firm faces a demand curve that is perfectly elastic or the point where when the price changes to a particular point or at a short two or two units that makes the quantity of the product to increase more than two units so the elasticity of the product is high or perfectly elastic at that point the firm enjoys the normal profit and the firm faces a demand curve that is perfectly elastic and this is the curve that is perfectly elastic curve and also and also the price here is the price that enjoy by all the firm in the market so this case in the perfectly competitive market position a uh, market firm and uh, the demand curve here, here is perfectly elastic. Clear? And we move to the next question. The profit maximizing level of output for a firm that represented in the diagram. And here the demand curve AR equals MR. And also this is the MC curve. And this is the average total cost ATC curve. And here we want to answer at what level the firm maximizes profit. Here gives the first point that is MC that equals or the MC touches the ATC. And the next 50 units for MC equals ATC. This is the point. And next point MC equals AC. Or MC equals MR. Okay, MC equals MR point. And the next 80 units for ATC equals demand. So, we know what is the profit maximizing level of output. That is 
MC equals MR. So here the MC equals MR point is what? That is 60 units. Here the 60 units. So the answer for this question is 60 units of output. Clear. The profit maximizing level of output of a firm is MC equals MR or marginal cost equal to marginal revenue. So the 60 units is the output for ma profit maximizing of a firm. Next question. Which market AR and MR curves are flatter or elastic? So the AR and MR curve, that is the average revenue and the marginal revenue. And the market given are monopoly, monopolistic, also the both markets or none of these. So here the monopoly market and the monopolistic market face a AR or MR curve that will flatter or elastic or inelastic. So for a monopoly firm, the AR and MR is steeper or that's like this steeper curve. And here in monopolistic competition with differentiated product, the curve is or the AR and MR curve is like that. It is flatter or it's like elastic. So here the monopoly and monopolistic competition, the AR and MR curve is different. For the market flatter or elastic curve, we can see in the monopolistic competition. Okay, and what, what is the difference between monopoly and monopolistic competition? In monopoly, there are only one firm. There is only one firm. But in monopolistic, there are number of firms, but there, the products that they produce or they sell is differentiated or there are some difference between the products products that produce them okay so but the uh, thing or the product is same but there are some difference between the products clear and the next question before we move into next question, let's see what global online offering for you. We provide complete syllabus, video lectures, notes, mock tests and last 10 years PYQs. That will really help you to catch your exam in a very fast term. And you can get it from our app in the Play Store. After en installing our app, you can enroll the required course. And any doubts regarding to this, please contact with the given WhatsApp number and get paper 1 completely course free with paper 2. Okay. And next question. Which of the following is a feature of monopolistic market? We can see what is a monopolistic market and what is a monopoly. And here there are some features that is given in the option. And we want to answer the question. What's the feature of monopolistic competition or monopolistic market? And the options given industry with significant barriers to entry and a single supplier. And here there are only a single supplier and there is a particular or significant barriers to entry. And the second option, there is highly concentrated market with just few interdependent firms. And third, highly competitive market with slightly differentiated products. And fourth, the competitive market, highly competitive market where firms are price takers. And we can see what is a monopolistic market or monopolistic competition. Here that is, that is slightly differentiated products. We say that what is a monopolistic competitive market or monopolistic competition is the market for differentiated products. And here the first option is the significant barriers to entry and a single supplier is the market for oligopoly or this is O oligopoly market. And the second, the highly concentrated market with just few interdependent firms that is that is duopoly or the cartel. This is an example of cartel. And the next is the highly competitive market where firms are price takers. That is here the competitive market. Here the competitive, perfectly competitive market. Clear. And the next question. 
the concept of product differentiation was introduced by we say about or we talk about what is product differentiation and the product differentiation is the concept given by chamberlain and he given the concept in 1933 what is product differentiation here the product differentiation means there are some differences in the packing or advertisement or any other qualities of a product but the usage of the products are same but the packing or advertisement or any other features are different between okay for example the different types of phones like uh, the smartphones there are many uh, branded smartphones and there we can see many similarities and all, also differences so here the product differentiation was introduced by edward chamberlain in 1933 okay and you can get this question in the match the following so you can easily answer that is chamberlain who introduced the or who proposed the concept in 1933 okay and the next question the cartel so here the each member have exclusive right to operate in a particular geographic area so uh, geographic area here so the each member have the exclusive right here so we can uh, see this is the example for market sharing cartel this is based on a geographic area particular geographic area what is a cartel cartel is a grouping of the producers based on some criteria and here the market is shared in a particular criteria and here the geographic area is related so that is a market sharing cartel and the one example for this cartel is petroleum products that is opec okay and next question related with also cartel the cartel that operates like a multi plant monopolist or a multi plant monopolist cartel is based on centralized cartel so here the in centralized cartel that operates like a multi plant monopolist or more than one plant monopolist or multi plant monopolist is called centralized cartel okay here the price leadership cartel is the one who the uh, price leader or who uh, introduces the price and all other members in the cartel should obey or should must introduce or deal with that price okay and market sharing that is the geographic area the firm have the right exclusive right to uh, they get that market or is uh, based on a particular area geographic area okay next one who introduced kingred banco kingred banco that's the word kingred that is introduced by Paul C. V. C. Paul M. C. U. C. Who introduced the Kinger demand curve? And next, in a Kinger demand curve, the price increase is, or when the price increase, what happened to a Kinger demand curve? And in Kinger demand curve, that's a feature of elasticity and inelasticity. So both the characteristics are introduced in the same curve. So this illustrated in the interdependence of firms in an oligopoly market. So this Kinger demand curve we can see in the oligopoly market, oligopoly market, and then the reason why there is a kink in the demand curve because there are two demand curves in kinger demand curve there are two types of demand curve one is the inelastic and the other is elastic so the kink occurs when both demand curve intersect each other so when elasticity and inelastic demand curve intersect each other a kink that happen or kink that goes in the demand curve that is Kinger demand curve, and when the price increase, what happened to Kinger demand curve? It makes inelastic, or when price increases, the curve become elastic. Clear? Then a Kinger demand curve. According to the Kinger demand curve model, a firm will assume that rival firms will do what? Whether they rights of production will constant. or the prices are constant or it will uh, the price will match cuts but not price rise or price increase or match price increase but not price cuts 
So in the model or in the oligopolic Ingrid demand curve model, a firm will assume that the rival firms do what? So the answer for this, they match with the price cuts but not the price increase. They can match price cuts or the price reduction but not price increase. So when firm price increase or price makes rise, the other firms will not obey or will not follow the price rise. Okay. And the next question related to monopoly. The monopoly can be controlled by what factors or the what is the reason for controlling the monopoly. Whether it is social boycott or anti-monopoly legislation or public ownership or all of this. So the monopoly can be controlled by all of this. So whenever there is an extremely monopoly situation, it can be controlled by social boycott or anti-monopoly legislation or le uh, laws or public ownership. It can be honored by the public or the government to reduce the monopoly or to control the monopoly. We can know, for example, the Indian Railway is the public ownership monopoly. So uh, we cannot... Uh, uh, we cannot sell or we cannot decentralize the power to other people or the private agency. Okay. Then the causes of emergence of monopoly. Or what is the reason for the monopoly emergence? Whether it is the concentration of raw materials or state regulation or public utility service or all of this. And the answer is all of this. These three reasons can uh, make the emergence of monopoly. The raw materials ownership also and the state regulations also and also the public utility services. Okay, public utility means the services that need all to, all in the society. The, whether it is water supply or electricity or any other service, roads, uh, road security services, etc. All are related with the public utility service. And because of all these reasons or these factors the, that causes the emergence of monopoly. And next, the uh, describes a barrier to entry. What, which is the barrier, which describes a barrier to entry in the market or in the production unit. So here there is given anything that protects a firm from the arrival of new competitors. Anything, any rules, any regulations that makes the arrival of new firm to restrict. Okay. And the second option, government regulation that bars a monopoly from earning an economic profit. So the government regulation that bars economy or a monopoly that is a barrier. And the next is something that establishes a barrier to expanding output. So anything that barrier to the expanding output that is the barrier to entry. Next option says, uh, says Firms already in the market incurring economic losses, incurring economic losses so that no firms wants to enter the market or the market incurring economic losses so uh, the firms, new firms cannot or they want no, they no wants to enter the market. So here the incurring economic losses firms are the one to the barrier to entry. So what what are what which describes a barrier to entry? We can see all these are the reasons for barrier to entry. But the one which describes the barrier to entry in a significant way that is the anything that protects a firm from the arrival of new competitors. So the barrier to entry means to protect the firm from the arrival of new competitors that is called the barrier to entry and all these factors that come later or they follow the protection okay and the next question that's for you that is perfectly competitive firms are price takers because the firm is very large or there are no good substitute for their goods or the many other firms produce identical products or their demand curves are downward sloping. And what is the reason for the perfect competitive markets or the perfect competitive firm to become price takers? And please give the answer in the comment box and we will meet in next video with wonderful another topic. And till then, watch videos. Thank you. Have a nice day.